Hello, um, welcome uh, to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing the case of a uh, gentleman who was uh, referred to us uh, for prosthetic artery embolization. This is uh, the case of an 85 year old patient with uh, BPH. Uh, this patient was sexually active, so he was interested in uh, a procedure that would not worsen his sexual function. He had progressively worsening symptoms of lower urinary tract. Um, leading up to uh, complete urinary retention. This patient, of course, was not um, interested in any surgery. And uh, here you can see his prostate uh, on the MRI. On the right hand is a, a coronal view, like you're looking at it on FAS. And uh, on the right hand side, you see the prostate from the side. So you can see clearly that the prostate is a large heterogeneous, where we see. Uh, uh, in the middle is what we call the um, transitional zone or the medial lobe of the prostate which is very prominent as I'm scrolling through here on the coronal views. So the patient uh, was not interested in any uh, surgery and um, also his health didn't doesn't allow him to undergo like invasive surgeries. So he came to us for consideration for a PA. Uh, we looked at the MRI. MRI showed a prominent uh, medial lobe of the prostate that I'm contouring here on the coronal view. Inside you can see it's pretty heterogeneous. There are some nodules. Uh, all of these are benign. There's also a large um, a protrusion inside the bladder lumen pushing the um, inferior part of the bladder inside as you can see and it's um, on the sagittal view, you can clearly see this protrusion of the medial lobe, this intraprostatic protrusion, which kind of pushes the, um, you know, the bladder and blocks the outflow of the bladder, making it impossible for the patient to urinate. So these his symptoms were progressively worsening over a period of many years, ultimately um, culminating in a complete and total urinary retention that happened to the patient just before his appointment with us, um, he had to go to the emergency room where they place a Foley, uh, which is a urinary catheter. And as you can imagine, it's not really uh, a uh, ideal solution for someone who, uh, you know, even though his age, he was still socially active um, and uh, romantically involved. So uh, highly disruptive, as you can imagine. So, uh, the, we looked at the candidate and looked at the uh, MRI and the patient was a uh, good candidate for the uh, prosthetic artery embolization procedure. In his case, uh, typically I do not insert any Foley on uh, my patient, but since this patient came already with urinary Foley, so uh, we just keep it in place during the procedure and afterwards and then uh, typically we bring the patient after ten, one week to 10 days to do what we call a void-in trial. So the procedure is performed under local anesthetic and we insert a catheter into, into the blood vessel. And you see quickly, almost instantaneously, I'm already catheterizing. You see this tiny wire followed by the catheter. We're already entering the internal vasculature of the pelvis. We shoot a little bit of contrast, which is a dye that allow us to see the blood vessels. Once we get the, a good image uh, of the blood vessels, we use it as a map to navigate. So we do a navigation. It's like when you have a map and you navigate on your GPS. Of course, we know, uh, we are experts in the male pelvis anatomy. We know all these vessels by name. We know the variance anatomy. We know uh, every function of this vessel. So this is where you need a physician who is really an expert who has been doing this for a while and he's an expert in this type of procedure. So the second challenge is once you recognize this arteries, it's getting to him. So that's what we did here. Uh, on this patient, it was um, relatively straightforward. So we got quickly access into the prostatic artery. So the tip, the, the little dot that you see here is actually the tip of my micro catheter, which is like smaller than uh, my blood vessel. You see, you don't even see it here. So the tip, the, the little dot here, I inject contrast so you can, uh, you know, confirm that this is really the artery and I'm dealing with, and this is the left lobe of the prostate. Uh, just on top of it, there's another artery that goes to the bladder. So again, 
physician has to be expert. He has to know what he's doing. You cannot, there's no room for mistake. If you make a mistake, you'll be causing some problems. So uh, in addition to that, we have, uh, this is a runoff. This is a, a angiographic runoff that shows us like a good image of the left lobe of the prostate. There's another type of imaging that we interventional radiologists do. It's called the Combeam CT, which is an image of, um, it's like a CT, it's like a CAT scan that allows us to see exactly where we are and it shows, shows us directly the prostate. We inject some contrast and we take some pictures. The machine rotates around the patient. And then uh, the interest of this type of imaging is to remove any doubt, especially for physician. So this is a rotational imaging. You can see the picture rotates around and then the computer will reconstruct those images for us. This really instantaneous, it takes two minutes to do during the procedure, but it removes any doubt. We see clearly where the enhancement, you can see this white dye, the contrast goes and kind of colors the blood, the, the prostate, I'm sorry, it tells us, tells us exactly. Okay, so if you see that's the area that is white and we know exactly that this where my little particles will go. So if I don't see it in the bladder here, we see it only in the medial lobe. Remember this, this image, remember the medial lobe. If you remember this is what I showed you on the MRI, the sagittal view, the lateral view, so it's exactly the same. This is the rectum behind the prostate. This is the balloon. This is the Foley catheter. This is, uh, you know, the, the catheter. This is the retention balloon of the Foley catheter. This triangular shape structure is the bladder and can see the wall is thickened and the white is just the urine which has contrast that is excreted by the kidney and that's the medial lobe of the prostate we're going to use particles to block the circulation of that medial lobe which kind of make it shrink so again once we do the embolization the embolization is temporary in nature the effect is not permanent the prostate does not completely die in necrosis or anything like that like some i heard some urban legend trying to scare people from prostate embolization. No, so because why? The reason because sometimes we have to repeat it and we actually can repeat the PA. That means that the, the arteries reopen. The prostate remains alive. Just some of the tissue, of course, will die and shrink and then get resorbed naturally by the body. So main advantage is like there's no cutting, there's no destruction, there's, we don't remove tissue, we don't alter the structure of the prostate those tubes that are responsible for the ejaculation that get removed during surgery and that's why people ejaculate in their bladder they lose the ejaculation uh, we don't have all these these um, uh, complication of surgery of course um, as you can imagine there's also no risk for the urinary sphincter and uh, if anything we notice in our research that sexual function actually gets better uh, we have multiple hypotheses one of them is just uh, uh, patient when they get better they stop their um, medication their prostate medication which is known to have secondary effects on the sexual function and my own hypothesis is has is related to the recirculation of blood flow once you block the especially if you have a big prominent prostate once you block the blood flow of the prostate especially if it shares a common vessel to the penis so all the, all the blood will go to the penis and then automatically patient gets like a much better re sexual response so this is we embolize, we inject particles here, and at the end, once the uh, part particle saturates uh, the prostatic bed, here I am doing what I call the um, perfected technique. So perfected technique was invented by Professor Carnavali in Brazil, where I trained with, and it simply we just advance a little bit further inside the prostate, the microcatheters you see here. Uh, which comes literally in the prostatic bed inside the prostate and that allows us to inject a little bit one more cc uh, totally in this patient i was really did not i was not able to inject as much particle as i, I wished given the uh, size of the prostate so i was surprised to see uh, a quick uh, stasis of flow 
and um, I really did minimal injection. I do procedure here repeated on the other side, so we do it on both sides, the, the PAE, we do it on the right side, do it on the left side, so exactly the same um, procedure. Again, I, even on the right side, I was not able to inject much beads as I would love to, and I finished the embolization with a bit of gel foam. So now, follow up. So on left hand of the screen, you can see the image before and the right hand after. Uh, before his IPSS score was uh, really maximum because it was completely urinary retention. His quality of life uh, questionnaire, he felt terrible. And of course, he could not have sex because he had a folly. At one month, you can see uh, a spectacular reduction of the IPSS hour at 13. Quality of life was still mixed. He was not still very happy. And his shim score was 16. Uh, over to so here, we see the um, remember this is the median lobe of the prostate you can see the protrusion this is exactly the area that we embolize if you remember the cone beam ct it showed the enhancement in that area so we can see a big prostate we don't even need to measure it i'm going to give you the volumes afterwards you can see the heterogeneous aspect the inside of the prostate has uh, still those nodules this is before uh, the pa you can see all these nodules these are benign nodules that are cancer um, There was no complication. The patient did not even feel pain or anything after the procedure with the charge home. It was uneventful. So, of course, uh, he get, went back to his urologist. He was able to remove his foley after 10 days. He was able to urinate, and then we did an MRI. And the MRI actually was done at three months, but we did the first follow-up at one month, and the initial follow-up was uh, is shown on the, um, um, on the screen. Bladder is thickened. As you can see it's not really a um, normal looking bladder it's uh, the wall is thickened and it's trapeculated a little bit at three months three months we repeat the MRI three months you can see now the prostate is clearly has shrunk significantly you can see it you know in the naked eye you can see the reduction in that intraprostatic protrusion you can see that the medial lobe is actually more homogeneous miraculously there's no more those little nodules that we see and uh, Clinically speaking, it correlates very well with the uh, good uh, radiological results. At three months, his IPSS now is eight, which is like moderate symptoms. His quality of life is pleased and his shim score is okay, given his age. Now, if we measure the uh, prostate volume, pre-procedurally, the prostate was about 117 uh, cc's. And post-procedurally, we measured the volume on MRI. It was like 60 cc. So our prostate, of course, prostate volume measurement is much more accurate than what the urologist can ever estimate with his uh, finger. And uh, you know, one bonus thing is uh, actually we have other software that can uh, help us measure with great accuracy and precision. I didn't use it here, but it's called automatic segmentation of the prostate that kind of, uh, in my humble opinion, is the best way to exactly measure the volume of the prostate. There's no estimation. And uh, we use it in some instances, but here, I mean, just looking at it, you can see good radiological result, excellent clinical results for the patient, even though I was a little bit disappointed during the procedure, I was not able to inject as much as I want. So in conclusion, you can see here, this is a radial axis on the picture. If you want a procedure with no surgery, no general anesthesia, no tube in the throat, no tube in the penis, with a rapid recovery, all it takes is a weekend to recover, there's no sexual side effect, no loss of ejaculation, no urinary incontinence, and no bleeding, that's what I call a no-brainer procedure. If you want to go ahead with the, with the surgery, it's great. Surgery is amazing, works well. But I ultimately think that a well-informed patient is a patient with empowered. And at the end of the day, it's your body. You have a choice. You can either go both ways. Uh, recent uh, studies show that the results are similar. But of course, I can tell you that the PAE has much less complication, risk, and side effects, and better quality of life. Thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. And if you have any question, comment, please let me know. Thank you.